All right, we're going. All righty. Two years ago, I stumbled upon a YouTube video that blew halls and favorites out of the water. Makeup lovers all over the country have been diving into dumpsters behind big box beauty stores and snagging thousands of dollars of brand new and used makeup, documenting their finds for hundreds of thousands of people to see. And thus began a year-long journey that ended with me diving into a dumpster myself. It all began with Jessica Kassler, whose dumpster diving videos have made her something of an expert on the topic. I made my way to her apartment in New Jersey to find out more about her hobby. How did you get into this? I got into dumpster diving probably seven years ago at this point. In college, I watched a documentary called Dive. And in that documentary, there's a guy who dumpster dives for food. And he really showed how there's like an insane amount of food waste in America. So we tried dumpster diving for food, loved it, it was successful. I had seen, I was on YouTube one day, that someone dumpster dived for makeup. And I was like, what? Since I had already done it for food, I was like, oh, I can do this. So it took me like two seconds to like put on a pair of old jeans and like try it myself. It was very successful. I went into the dumpster, there was a box. I pulled it out, it said like returns or damaged or something. And it was just all nice product and I just like put it in my car and went home. Let's talk about the legality of dumpster diving. It's legal in the United States, but obviously you wanna make sure you're not trespassing. It's not the most black and white thing. There are definitely a lot of gray areas. And Jess is right. The 1988 Supreme Court case, California v. Greenwood, made dumpster diving legal in the United States. However, certain city or county laws can still make the practice illegal. If dumpsters rest on private property, it's still unlawful to trespass. I've had an instance once where a dumpster door closed on me. It was windy and it was fine, it scared me. It's dangerous, right, to be in a dumpster. Like, other people could be using that dumpster as their personal receptacle. So you always kind of want to be prepared for, like, the worst. Apart from the obvious physical harm associated with dumpster diving, the overall practice of using and sometimes reselling makeup found in dumpsters sounds unhygienic, to say the least. So I sat down with Mount Sinai dermatologist, Dr. Zeichner, to find out just what could be lurking inside a dumpster. What are some of the health and hygiene risks of diving into a dumpster and taking beauty products out of it? When you purchase a beauty product new from the store, you know the history of that product. But when it's in the dumpster, you don't know the history. You don't know who used it before. You don't know what it's touched. And there are some real issues here in terms of infectious diseases. Bacteria like staph that can cause abscesses, skin infections. And then of course there are viral infections like herpes virus. If there was a lipstick that somebody else used and they had a cold sore and then they returned the product, you don't know what's actually living on that lipstick. There are preservatives in a product and the company can only guarantee that it's not contaminated up to the date that's on there for its expiration. Solids are easier to sanitize than liquids. When I hear about sanitizing the applicator of the liquid lipstick, you're not sanitizing the liquid itself. Something like that makes me really, really nervous. So I always tell everybody to err on the side of safety. There are clear health and hygiene risks to dumpster diving. No matter how one feels about the practice itself though, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong. I just watched hours worth of videos of dumpster divers rifling through hordes of product. For me, the real question isn't why do people dumpster dive, it's why are these stores throwing away all of this product? Jess wondered the same thing. The first time I did it, it was really just eye-opening that like, oh my gosh, all of this stuff is being thrown away. Oh, you're dumpster diving for makeup, like why? There's so much more than that. Like a lot of times there's like soaps and shampoos and body care products that are just getting thrown away. And I hate thinking that all that stuff's gonna be unused and go in the dumpster and go in a landfill when it really doesn't need to be. Definitely a really bad haul would be something that's souped. What does that mean? Souped is when the employees of that business have either dumped lotion or foundation or bleach onto the products in response to dumpster divers. You know, since it got popular on YouTube, I'm sure there's been talks down the line, all right, employees gotta get more serious about souping. Electronics like hair dryers or curling irons or straighteners, what they do to technically soup those products is that they'll cut the cord. But luckily, I know someone that can put them back together, and so I have a perfectly usable, expensive hair dryer that I use every day. I reached out to Ulta Beauty, a store many divers frequent, to find out why their products are sent to landfill. 
Although they declined to be interviewed, they did provide this statement. Ulta Beauty, like other retailers, disposes of product for a reason. Products that are damaged, used, expired, or otherwise unsaleable or unsuitable for donation are disposed of in accordance with applicable laws, rules, and regulations. It's understandable that retailers need to dispose of products deemed unsafe. But after seeing items like perfectly usable beauty tools wind up in the dumpster, I couldn't help but wonder, is there another option when it comes to disposing of product? It all goes back to corporate responsibility. Recycling seems like the logical first step, but it isn't the best option, especially since 91% of plastic isn't recycled. That's why companies like TerraCycle have cropped up, to help process hard to recycle materials. We deal with items that cost more to process and recycle than the value at the end. So TerraCycle partners with different brands who sponsor the shipping and recycling of all of their non-recyclable material. What are some things that are deemed non-recyclables? In the instance of personal care and beauty, think about the different types of plastics and or metals that might be in one single product. If you have a shampoo bottle with a pump, Inside of that may be a spring or some sort of an additional plastic, so it's multi-polymer, and so it automatically becomes more complicated in that way. What do you think that retailers and brands can do instead of putting all this waste into landfill? The first step for a lot of brands is to take a macro step back and say, okay, what is it that we're producing? What do our supply chains look like? What's important to our consumer? How do we want to be a good steward to the environment? And then what's the end of life for our product? So once a consumer has it and they've now utilized the product inside, then what? How can we offer an end of life solution that's sustainable and not negatively impacting the environment and remove waste from landfills? According to a 2015 report by Nielsen, 66% of global consumers say they're willing to pay more for sustainable brands. Retailers can work with third-party organizations to ensure that their unsaleable products aren't left sitting in landfills for the next 500 years. And brands should be taking the steps needed to get there. But it's not just the disposal methods of product that needs to change. It's the products themselves. Beauty industry veteran Shane Wolf has worked with successful hair care brands like Redken and Pureology. In 2018, he worked with L'Oreal to launch Seed Phytonutrients, a brand that uses shower-friendly, compostable cardboard bottles. I would love to learn from you about why you decided to start Seed. I spent my entire career working in the beauty industry and there came a point when I started to see the pictures of ocean plastic and reading the, the realities of the fact that our landfills are filling with mountains of plastic. And I'm looking around at the beauty industry that I would spent all my career in saying, we can do better than this. As knowledge increases with consumers, we see their choices shifting as well. A great example is the no straws movement. For me, the, the tipping point was when I went from wanting to create an actual product as in a formula to then saying, but how will we package that? It's time to go because we need to lead by example to show that there is another way. There was never a moment of doubt. We went directly to the CEO of L'Oreal Worldwide and pitched the idea. It was a yes from the beginning. What makes the seed phytonutrients bottle and the things that you package your products in different from what else is out there on the market? Knowing we already had great formulas, we knew we would only launch when we found a packaging solution that helped to reduce our dependency on plastic overall. Very little plastic is recycled. On the contrary, about 90% of paper is recycled in the US. So the seed phytonutrients bottle is the industry's first shower safe paper bottle that is composed of 60% less plastic than a normal bottle. So I'm pleased that we have reduced the amount of plastic per bottle by 60%, but in no way am I satisfied. And in 2019, we're down to 70% with a plan to reach 80% less by the year after that. The beauty industry creates an exorbitant amount of waste, that much we know. I decided I had to see for myself just how much is thrown away. So I hitched a ride with Jessica to go diving at her local beauty superstore. What advice do you have for me? What should I expect? I think going in with no or low expectations is probably the way to go. Visualize that we're going to find something. Okay. Definitely I, I plan my route of like, all right, I wanna hit this place, this place, and this place, and kind of organize it like that. Got it. I'm glad you're like my guide tonight. Yeah. You're like the Gandalf of <laughs> diving.
Ready? All right. First dumpster, what's in here? So exciting. Looks like, hmm, boxes, boxes and stuff. Okay. Yeah, try to land and like, yeah. Ew. Bye. <laughs> All right, I think this is a dud. It is a cardboard only receptacle. The reason I wanted us to go in there is because sometimes you do find product in the cardboard mm -hmm. um, bins. That's just because people are lazy or don't read the sign and put yeah. in whatever they want. All right, dumpster number two. Let's do this. After you. Thank you, thank you. Be careful with this one. Guys. Okay. It's not easy. Got it? Okay. Okay. So it doesn't smell the greatest in here. But it doesn't smell that bad. It's like, not so bad. Not what I was expecting. Okay, yeah, this is I definitely like their it. food situation. But look at this. So here's There's product. This is definitely product, right? Hair gel. Let's just see if it's like, I don't know. It doesn't look touched. untouched. So that might be a keep. So this looks open, some sort of hair color. That's, that would be a no-go. Shampoo, but it does look 100% full. If you need to organize things outside of a dumpster, that's fine, but obviously make sure that you like clean up even more than you found it. Just being respectful of the area. Oh my God, we found the mother load. This is clearly a bag that um, is full of like completely new, untouched lotions, conditioners, hairsprays. I mean, just tons of stuff. Looks like totally unopened. They were just on sale and yeah, nobody no wants one wanted them. them and they just right. trashed them. Absolutely. Spray, spray on. on. Spray on color. Right. I'm just... So I'm seeing more stuff over here. Like I found a whole bunch of these. More hairspray. It's 100% full. Oh wait, I found more. A whole bunch of hair color. A ton of hair color, yeah. It's powder acrylics. Everything's there. Like none of it's, it's all fine. Oh. I would say we found a pretty successful haul. I think so, this is great. Like I said, yeah. you, sometimes you find absolutely nothing or there's been someone there before you. Yeah, or... you got the goods. Yeah. Regardless of how you feel about diving itself, there are many ways companies and consumers can make more sustainable choices. And we shouldn't stop there. Yeah. It's also important that the government has set them up for success too, like offering tax incentives for sustainable initiatives. Nice. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> I can't begin to know what the long-term solution to this problem is. All I know for sure is that something needs to be done. And with the interest in sustainable and natural beauty surging, this couldn't be a better time for consumers and brands to stand up and show the world what really matters to them. In an ideal world, maybe you wouldn't even have to. Right. You wouldn't have to dumpster dive because everything would have a place and have a home and there wouldn't be overproduction of stuff. I look forward to the day when there's no longer the beauty industry and the sustainable beauty industry, when it is just the beauty industry. And I know that we're going to get there. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Click here to subscribe to Refining29 and click here to watch another video. Bye.